Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ferenc Toku. I'm head of the International Strategy Office of the Rector's Cabinet of the Shoran University, and I will be the host of today's event. I would like to welcome all of you to the third lecture of the popular scientific lecture series titled What's Science? In this series, we are organizing lectures held by professors from ELTA, and uh, the topics of the lectures will all revolve around science. These lectures are not only for the uh, practitioners of the specific professional field, but all citizens and international alumni of ELTA. This year's lectures will display the effects of the COVID-19 epidemic on education and learning. The title of today's lecture is Health Psychology of COVID-19, When Behavioral Sciences and Technology Move. The session is going to be held by Dr. Robert Urban, Professor of Psychology. Professor Urban is a health psychologist and his main research interest is focused on the behavioral determinants of health, such as smoking, uh, uh, physical activity and eating behaviors. He is currently the head of the Department of Personality and Health Psychology and head of the Health Psychology Research Group. He is a lecturer at the Institute of Psychology and a member of the Scientific Committee Faculty of Doctoral Council, uh, Faculty Doctoral Council, sorry, and the Habilitation Committee. The What's New in Science lecture series is one of the many event series in English that ELTA is planning for anyone interested in these lectures and specifically for international alumni. These series are part of the ELTA Alumni Academy organized by the International Alumni Chapter. Make sure to stay up to date with the upcoming events through ELTA website and the alumni website of the university, alumni.elta.hu, where you can join the ELTA alumni community as well. We would like to thank the ELTA Alumni Center, ELTA Alumni Organization, and the ELTA Alumni Foundation for their continuous support in launching the ELTA Alumni Academy. With that, uh, I would like to welcome today's presenter, head of the Department of Personality and Health Psychology, Professor Robert Urban, and give him the floor, so to speak, the screen uh, to start his lecture. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ferenc, uh, and thank you very much for all uh, who, who came to, to, to see, to, to hear, to listen to this lecture. Um, COVID-19 is, is a challenge in, in all fields of our life and health psychology can contribute to, to, to deal with this challenge, to cope with this challenge uh, and that is the goal here to, to present how health psychology can, can, um, can contribute to this coordinated action uh, to, uh, uh, to decrease the negative impact of COVID-19. So before, before I, I, I want to uh, summarize what I'm going to talk about today, uh, first I'm going to talk about what health psychology is, and then I will focus on, on, on a research that we had done uh, uh, regarding uh, the preventive behaviors uh, against COVID-19, and then I want to focus a little bit on, on face mask use and then later on um, uh, at the last, uh, last uh, topic will be about sickness behavior. And all topic is related somehow because I think I, I hope that it will be clear enough at the, at the end of, of this lecture that, uh, that we want to focus on how to prevent the transmission of COVID-19. So, um, the first question is, what health psychology is? Health psychology is, is, uh, is, a, is a multidisciplinary 
field of psychology, I mean multidisciplinary because uh, because health psychologists usually work in a multidisciplinary team uh, with biologists, uh, with, uh, with physicians, with uh, with sociologists, and with all other all other uh, researchers and practitioners. And the goal of health psychology is to improve health, to protect health, and to help people to change behavior in order to to promote their health or prevent uh, disease or or other conditions. So the health psychology is 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 uh, is a field, and and I'm fascinated with health psychology because uh, because it requires uh, knowledge from biologic uh, from biology and from sociology as well, and and we try to integrate. Uh, 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 from from the molecules to, to the societies, and we, we try to find a place where psychology is in this uh, uh, in this network. So, as you see in this uh, word cloud, that um, health psychology is dealing with behavior. Health psychologists develop interventions. Health health psychologists develop theories to explain why people behave in a certain way, why people do smoke, why people do physical activity, how we can avoid, how we can, uh, uh, avoid uh, obesity, how we can prevent obesity, or, or how we can help people in, in order to improve their the health, their quality of life, or maybe their the, the longevity. And, uh, Sometimes uh, the role of health psychology is not so clear. So if you can say that uh, um, uh, in the pre-COVID uh, pre era, health psychologists deal mainly with, uh, with chronic conditions, chronic diseases uh, in, in, in the prevention work. We wanted to prevent cancer, we wanted to prevent obesity, we want to prevent other, other, other chronic conditions. And it was not so clear what is the role of health, psycho uh, health psychology in, in, uh, in, in epidemics, in pandemics. Um, and if, if I can share you uh, one of my experience, uh, uh, which showed that uh, the early time it was not clear what, how health psychologists can contribute to even epidemiology. I have participated in a training, epidemiology training, um, and uh, we had a class which called field epidemiology. Field epidemiology is a part of the epidemiology which works to find the source of uh, of outbreak of of, of a problem like outbreak of salmonellosis and sort of things. And I was the only psychologist in the, in in, in uh, among among the students of of of, of the field epidemiology, and the. And the teacher who, who taught us this uh, this field was surprised. What what why I'm there? So and then uh, she couldn't imagine what why a psychologist participates uh, in uh, in this kind of training. The reason why I took uh, uh, epidemiology uh, classes is that. I think that uh, that epidemiology is dealing with behavior. So even even uh, even in, in a salmonellosis, we uh, there are there is behavior inside. Why people behave so uh, behave that way, and and that, that the same for 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 COVID nineteen. So the the main essence of, of of the psychologist work is to understand human behavior, and maybe to predict, to explain, or or, or change human behaviors in in order to improve the uh, the individual health and societies and and health of the society. So if we check what's uh, what's going on in um, in, in in the field. Um, we, uh, and when um, um, I, I checked the uh, PubMed uh, entries, PubMed is a, is, is a public access of Medline in which, uh, which lists all publications of, of the field. And I just want to show you that, uh, uh, that psychologists were 
at, from at the very beginning of the pandemic, psychologists looked for the way how they can contribute to the societies to deal with these issues. And I, I, ju I just did a quick search of how many entries we can see in the PubMed uh, really, uh, we, um, in, in, with MASH terms, with medical subject heading terms relevant to health psychology and, and, and COVID. So, and as you see here that the most entries, the, the lar largest number of entries is, is, is uh, um, uh, it was, was in, in, in mental, with mental disorders, mental disorders and COVID-19. So that, that was the main, uh, uh, main interest in, uh, in, in psychologists and researchers. Um, um, the other most frequent entries is stress and psychologi uh, psychological stress and COVID-19 and health behavior um, and maybe behavioral symptoms. So there are so many aspects of, of, of COVID-19 and, and relevant area that we can cover when we talk about health and COVID and health psychology and COVID. But what uh, my main interest is, as I mentioned uh, before, my main interest is behavior. So that I also check the compliance and health behavior uh, and COVID, and this is much less number of, of, of research. But the main essence of, of one of the major question is, one of the major questions in health psychology is is why people behave in in favor of health or maybe against uh, against of the health. So and um, let let me inter let me explain what the word compliance mean, means here in this in this uh, in this con context. The compliance is a word which describes that the patients or clients follow what uh, what the physicians advise advises to him or her. So this is a compliance, or we are going to use in the in this uh, in this presentation adherence, which means that. Uh, uh, but, uh, there is an agreement between physicians and or, or healthcare workers and and the individuals regarding the uh, um, the appropriate or 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 beneficial be behaviors. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to focus mostly on on those behaviors which can prevent the transmission of. Of, uh, of, corona, of novel coronaviruses, but the uh, most uh, more important, it's not, it's not just it, it is not not just about uh, the novel coronaviruses, but it's also about all other viruses which causes upper respiratory infections or other infections like like uh, like flu viruses and so on. Um, I borrowed this uh, this figure from uh, from Robert West and uh, and his colleagues uh, in in uh, on which uh, they explain uh, the protective behaviors against the transmission. There are different uh, behaviors here. There are there are behaviors here that we usually do, but we have to do it in another way now. So we have to change the behavior. There are behaviors here that we need to learn. That's very that that that's new thing that we didn't before, uh, at least not in in Western countries. Um, for example, that is uh, use of face mask. This is something that we didn't do it before in in Western countries. It it, it in Asian countries they they learned the face mask use. Much earlier, in 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 2003, there was an outbreak of SARS, and and in then in, in from that uh, from that time, the face mask use something that that they frequently used, and I'm going to talk about it, it as well. And also, uh, um, people have to had to learn how to use hand sanitizers, how to wash hands, how to disinfect uh, surfaces. How to stay home and not 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 meet other people? How to keep distance from each other, one or two meters? Um, how to avoid touching T zone? T zone is that those those zone of of, of the body which 
uh, which may be the NGO for the viruses like eyes, uh, nose, mouth, and, and so on. So these are uh, 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 the analyses which shows that uh, adapting to, to the, to the COVID-19, we need to learn new behavior or we need to change behaviors. And it, it requires effort and, and skills and knowledge. So that, that's why I, am, I, I want to emphasize in, in, according to health psychology, the best prevention tool is our brain. But in, in order to use this brain, we need knowledge, we need information, we need skills, and we need motivation, why we, why we want to do so. So when we talk about health psychology and interventions in health psychology, that, that's what we usually do. We want to increase knowledge, we want to teach skills, or we want to uh, foster motivation uh, to, to make the behavior happen. That after this general uh, introduction, I, I, I would like to, to continue with, our, with one of our research in this field, which was about the non-adherence to preventive behaviors. So we want to describe uh, um, um, uh, the prevalence of, of preventive behaviors and, and, uh, and, uh, and, behavior, and behaviors which are not conducive to, to prevent COVID-19 uh, transmission, uh, COVID, uh, coronavirus transmission. Um, and we also wanted to see um, if the, uh, what are the predictors of, of preventive uh, behaviors. So this, this work is done with collaboration with, uh, with, uh, with colleagues, uh, uh, Barbara Pakshi, uh, Adam Mikloshi, uh, uh, G.B. Saunders and, and Joel Demetrovich. So this, uh, this was a large-scale uh, large study. We asked more than 5,000 5, people uh, who represented the Hungarian population. So it's, it's not a convenient sample. So it is a, it is a, a, a sort of random sample uh, to decrease the selection biases. And just to see when we when we collected this data, I just put it here. Um, uh, what happened in that area? So it, we was quite fast to uh, to collect this data. So just just we were close to the cancellation of celebration of fifteenth of, of March, which is a uh, national uh, national feast, national holiday in in uh, in uh, in Hungary. There was an. Uh, emergency uh, declaration of emergency situation or university then schools closed and a few weeks after we had the data collection uh, uh, about the preventive behavior if you want to see uh, it is uh, in a more wider perspective so we did this data collection here this is at uh, march uh, uh, 21 and as you see this time or this time of, of, of the history of this of this pandemic, uh, we were very, very early stage. We hardly have a first wave if we compare to, to, to the later waves. So um, what was special in this in this period? Uh, the special was that that uh, we learned about, uh, uh, about coronavirus, novel coronaviruses. We learned about the COVID-19, which is a disease because the coronaviruses. And we had been exposed to many pictures uh, and, uh, and reports of, 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 of about what happens in uh, what happened in, uh, in in the hospitals, especially Bergamo and, and other uh, other Italian cities. So we were exposed. The hung, uh, hung, Hungarian people were exposed to to uh, to this uh, to this threat, but uh, but as for the numbers, the confirmed cases was very low, and also the death was very low in this uh, in this case, in this time. Uh, what we did, we asked this uh, 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 this. Um, um, 
more than 5,000 people about how frequently they, they try to avoid uh, close contacts, how frequently they avoid handshake or meeting other people, how frequently they stay home. And they had uh, the range of from never to always and also um, in between. For it is it is from one to five scales of, of, of the frequencies. So um, we asked uh, these behaviors and also in order to, to uh, simplify the, the further analysis, we run a, a data reduction technique, which is called factor analysis. And we found that four major factors uh, could be found in the behavior. So which means that uh, the first factor is avoidance of close contact. It reflects that uh, that people who who do who do who perform these behaviors, who perform uh, uh, avoiding handshake or avoiding close contacts, they they are more likely to perform to avoid meeting other people or stay home. So these are the, the, the these behaviors, the frequency of these behaviors, correlate uh, uh, highly with each other. The other factor is physical uh, physical barrier factor, like wearing face mask or wearing protective gloves. Um, and, the four, uh, and the third factor was personal hygienic behaviors, washing hands, using hand san sanitizer. Uh, it, interestingly enough, that, uh, that uh, keeping uh, 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 the physical distance uh, is, uh, is, is loaded on this factor. So, con uh, and, and avoiding self-touching, uh, self avoiding the T-zones is also loaded on this factor. And the fourth factor was a preparation, which means that uh, some people take vitamins in order to strengthen the body um, um, or store food again. So that's again a, a kind of a preventive, a preparatory behavior for, for the lockdowns or, or for, for more difficult period of times. So, uh, so we identify these four major factors um, in, in, in the responses of, of, of our participants. And we were interested in, is there any specific patterns of, 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 of this behavior, of these four factors among, among our participants? And we, uh, we performed a statistical analysis in which we try to identify the subgroup of, uh, uh, subgroups of population which are similar to each other. Um, and we find four major groups. And as you see in the solid line, there is a group of people which, uh, uh, who, whom perform this behavior almost always. So four is means almost always, five means always. So close to always. And we would call the, we would call this group as a fully adherent group, uh, adherent, fully adherent group to, to what they what advice was given to to uh, to, to protect uh, against the coronavirus. And there was an interesting another group, uh, which is in which we see in this uh, I don't know whether you can see my my cursor. Um, it is a uh, uh, it is class two. It it shows that um, these people almost always uh, try to avoid close contacts. They they perform personal hygienic behaviors, even some preparations, but they didn't hardly or very, very rarely use face mask. So as you see that we have seen two groups, which uh, the major main difference, uh, the, the, the main difference between these two groups was the face mask use. And it's not surprising that, uh, and that at that period of time, the face mask was, uh, was not regarded as, as, uh, as, um, from 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 the health officials didn't didn't uh, recommend the fa face mask even even WHO didn't recommend the, the the face mask and no one knows how they they reached this conclusion that face mask face mask 
does not work. But as we see, the as as people as people faced with the um, with the with, uh, diseases uh, spreading by droplets of uh, that the face mask is a very logical physical barrier uh, against these the, the, uh, these droplets. So um, I would call these two group, the, the, these two groups like uh, fully adherent and and partial adherent as an adherent group. So they they follow the advices according to how they understood uh, um, uh, how this uh, this behavior works. And some people very logically believe that face mask works, and some people just followed or just just reflected the ambivalence regarding the face mask use and then didn't use face masks. And, and, and we shouldn't forget that face mask is, was very, very new in, in, uh, in, for, for everyday people in, in, in Hungary or I would say in Western countries. Um, and there was other, other two groups. Where one group is uh, somewhat adherent, but not much. And that's what we call limited adherent group. And there was a, a relatively small group which uh, which reported that uh, they hardly uh, show this uh, uh, this uh, this behavior. This is a non-adherent group. For the sake of simplicity, uh, we we group this. Uh, 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 we created two groups from the from these four groups. I would say full or partial adherent group. That what we can call adherent group. And limited or no uh, no adherence, no adherence uh, present that we can call uh, the non-adherent group. But interestingly enough, that uh, uh, that uh, that, uh, that uh, full or partial adherent the adherent group is was was about uh, eighty two percent of the population, uh, according to our estimation based on this. Uh, uh, more than 5,000 people, 82, very high number. So in health psychology, when we talk about adherence, we can talk about adherence to, uh, to blood pressure medication, adherence to cancer treatment, adherence to, uh, to uh, uh, lipid, uh, blood lipid uh, uh, lowering drugs. So usually, we see very low utterance rate, 60%, 70%. And as for uh, at the beginning, beginning of, of the epidemic, the beginning of epidemic, the first wave, hardly a wave if we compare the later waves, the first wave, the, first wave, the Hungarian population showed very large degree of adherence. And on only only eighteen percent of uh, of the sample, and and if you can project it to the population, eighteen percent of the population was not adherent, uh, or just or, or just limited the way how how they followed the advices. So uh, let's try to understand uh, what makes people non-adherent. Uh, to the to the recommendation. This is important because that's the way how we can identify the risk groups and how we can identify those those groups in the population or in the society which requires specific treatment, like specific educational program or or other prog or other way to improve the adherence uh, rate. So we we run an analysis and we try to predict from the basic uh, uh, demographic variables. And what is surprisingly, at least um, uh, not so surprising, but uh, very um, uh, clear effect that we can see that men are more likely to be non-adherent than, than women. So which means this number 2.37 means that, uh, that men's 30, uh, the odds of, of being non-adherent is 30 point, uh, is uh, 30 point three times higher, 30 point four times higher for men than women. The other, um, that's an interesting thing, and let me come back to this uh, result a little bit later. The other important predictors of non-adherence is, is the younger age. 
it is not surprising because um, the early communication of regarding co uh, coronavirus, nova coronavirus virus and COVID-19 emphasized very strongly that the, the disease and, and COVID-19 is, is dangerous and is, uh, um, is threaten, uh, threatens only the old people with some, some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, chronic conditions. Um, so, and therefore it shows that, uh, that the, this message reflected in the population for at, among the young people that they don't really need to follow this uh, this uh, this uh, preventive tools that this preventive behavior and again we can see that the lower le lower level of education also um, uh, predicted uh, uh, non adherence to to the recommended actions and since at the beginning of the epidemic it was uh, the, the, the major center of, of the epidemic was in Budapest, so it's not surprising that uh, 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 that uh, other cities than Budapest or, or small cities and villages, um, uh, we, uh, people living in this uh, in these settlements, they they were more likely to be non-adherent. So, if you want to uh, su uh, summarize that, that uh, the non-adherence is more likely among males and uh, and among younger population. And we also uh, in checked whether this is somehow this this is uh, uh, somehow moderated by uh, by age. And as you see here, in, in subgroup in different age groups, we could also see here that the men, in somewhat uh, different degree, that the men uh, men are uh, uh, were more likely to be non-adherent than women, although three times. Higher, uh, higher odds or two times higher odds, but but definitely, um, men are more likely to be non-adherent in this case. That's a question. What is the consequences of this gender difference? In general, it in, in epidemiology and in health psychology, it's it's very common uh, uh, common knowledge that men usually have a shorter lifespan than women. So therefore, it is a question we, can, we have to we have to think of that uh, uh, might be that uh, they don't follow these uh, uh, this, uh, uh, preventive behaviors. They may are more um, threatened by uh, by the consequences of, of coronavirus infection. Um, if we see whether it is just true for the Hungarian population or, or it is a more general knowledge, we had to check uh, the, the previous publications and we also find that, uh, uh, that males tend to use face masks less frequently and less, less appropriately, which means that uh, it, the, the, these studies that I cite here, these are observational studies, so not just a questionnaire that we, what we did that asked them what they do, but they just observed on in a, in a naturalistic settings, they observed who wear who wear a face mask and how they wear that, and then they find that both that uh, that uh, men are less likely to wear a face mask, and if they wear, they are less they are more likely not not to do it appropriately, covering both nodes and 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 mouth. And another research also supported uh, what our find, uh, uh, our find, what we find that uh, again observational studies shows that uh, men are less likely to wash their hands. They observed they had secret cameras in bathrooms and after using to toilets they they coded who who washed their hands and who, who didn't. They did it in in. in, in uh, uh, they checked it in males and females as well, and then they found that males are less likely to do that. That is quite um, alarming, especially if you want to shake hands. Um, and the last uh, uh, last uh, research that I cite here is is based on self report it is not an observational study that's again they reported that uh, that males are more likely to transgress the rules of physical distancing and self isolating 
So these are this shows that uh, that this is in line with our finding that uh, uh, that men more uh, shows sh show more likely the non-Athian behavior to, to 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 prevention. And also we have another aspect that uh, that is uh, is important to to consider is that men show more health risk behavior, so that that, that smoking behavior, alcohol use behavior are more frequent among men than women. So the question is, how can it be translated into into the outcome of COVID nineteen? And the uh, the picture is not clear. Um, one one big meta analysis uh, at the, at at the early, this is an early meta analysis. They they show that uh, that there is there is no sex difference in the proportion of of males and females who 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 get infected by uh, coronavirus. So which means that. This uh, that's what we found. They may may not relevant in in terms of infection. But on the other hand, uh, in the same in the same study, they also uh, they also uh, showed that uh, that there is an increased odds or to to get uh, into intensive therapy unit um, for men, and they have also had a higher death rates from from COVID among, uh, among men. So that means that. The, uh, that uh, the men are more likely to get into 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 uh, ITU unit, or 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 they may more likely to die from COVID. On the other hand, another study shows that uh, in, in in this study they they used a cohort, a large cohort, a large sample of cohorts. Um, and they found that uh, that males tended to test positively to COVID-19 more likely than females. So, which means that probably the lower level of, of preventive behavior may be translated into the higher likelihood of getting COVID. And in this in this study, they also uh, they also find that males have higher increased risk. To, to get it, to get into ITU at uh, ITU and other and and have other com other complication including death and ventilate the ventilation and death. So uh, it, it the relevance of of this gender difference in in preventive behaviors is still not clear, but there is some signs that uh, that men uh, men are more vulnerable at least the consequences of of of, of uh, novel coronavirus infection. There can be some speculation what is the role of behavior um, uh, or, or there are other factors that, uh, that we don't cover here. Uh, but I think it's worth to study that whether, whether the preventive behaviors may play a role in this, uh, in, in this uh, negative outcome. We also uh, investigated other predictors. Uh, we checked whether the vulnerable family members is present, like old people, for example, old people or with uh, or people or, or family members with with chronic condition. It doesn't. It it, it didn't really had an impact on non adherence. Having a chronic illness also didn't have an impact on, on adherence. What did have impact is the, the perceived severity. And that's an important issue here because um, we, we see here the perceived severity that how, how the person perceived the, uh, the, the seriousness of, of, uh, of COVID-19. That ha that impacts the uh, the non adherent that decreases, actually, if, if they see that uh, that this is more serious condition, that decreases the chance or odds of of being non adherent. On the other hand, the susceptibility, the perceived susceptibility, how likely that the person can get uh, the mild condition from coronavirus infection or or whether the person got a severe condition of coronavirus infection, didn't really have an impact of, on, on, on the behavior. 
it's again not surprising. We we did this research in the early stage of epidemic, in and in which the prevalence of prevention of of infection and disease is, was very low in the Hungarian society. But as I mentioned, that the communication uh, uh, around around the uh, around COVID nineteen emphasized uh, very strongly the severity of the condition. And this is an important question for health communication as well. Should we promote, should we emphasize the severity of the condition or should we uh, put more emphasis on, on susceptibility? And we, if we check the, the literature uh, about, about this issue, what we find that the susceptibility varies across countries. Uh, but severity it, it was, uh, was, a, was a predictor of adherence or the non-adherence in all countries. So the severity, the perceived severity is an important factor, not the perceived susceptibility. Maybe due to the fact that, uh, that uh, very low uh, prevalence or, or a low, uh, in, I'm, I'm sorry, low incidence of, of infection was present at time. Um, what, what were the lessons? Uh, what were the lessons from this research? So, still, until there is no cure, there is no good treatment. Still, the preventive behavior or preventive behaviors are the tool, are the most important ways to protect individuals uh, and society. Even as we see nowadays. Even the vaccines, presence of vaccines, uh, still uh, the behavior is important. Males and younger, we need to focus on males and younger. We need to have specific, uh, uh, specific um, uh, strategy to, to, to improve the adherence, rate, uh, uh, adherence in males and, and young population. And I think that uh, we run out of time. I try to speed up my speech because there are so many other interesting things that I wanted to cover. One is a face mask, face mask use. And this is especially, especially interesting because this is a very new thing, as, especially in Western, uh, uh, Western countries. And there was so much debate about the, uh, the efficacy of, uh, of, uh, of the face mask. Is it, is it really, the uh, 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 face mask is really protecting us? Uh, or not, and still, uh, not uh, still, uh, there is still a debate. But uh, according to one research um, and and some other research as well, we can say that the face mask and the medical face mask, you know, there's the blue ones, uh, blue or a green one, um, is is a protective. We can say that that this can protect, and and as you see here, that there is no. No, when there is no uh, no face mask, that means that uh, the virus RNA RNA can be can be uh, um, uh, detected. When there is a face mask on, there is no virus RNA, and this is similar, very similar pattern in in in, in flu. Uh, but still, there is a debate about the size of droplets, how 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 this uh, this protective effect is different. Uh, according to the size of droplets, uh, and there is still a debate. We don't. Uh, I'm didn't want. I don't want to go into that detail because that's not a real psychology. But we need to know this uh, information to 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 educate uh, uh, the people about the face mask use. There is uh, um, uh, there are some um, uh, rapid reviews and meta analyses which promote face mask use, and. And another thing is that there is again, it's, it uh, it uh, we can call it as a as an indirect impact, in, indirect uh, uh, proof or indirect indirect supporting evidence of face mask is just when we started to use face masks, face mask there is no flu uh, or, or practically flu uh, flu infections vanished uh, from the population. There are might, might be several other reasons, not only the face mask, but there is might be. Some, uh, some, uh, um, there is some effect of face mask on this uh, on this pattern. 
And the face mask was not new. So it, it, um, in Asian countries, East Asian countries learned that the face mask is effective and um, uh, in, they learned it in the SARS uh, uh, epidemic in 2003. And as you see here, when, when uh, in, in Asian people, they had the costume to use face mask and this year, this year, uh, uh, Western people didn't use face masks. So that was so, so uh, cultural difference. And then this cultural difference is reflected how, how they perceived face mask uh, during the SARS uh, epidemic. And in this, uh, in this uh, qualitative study, they, uh, they investigated the meaning of the face mask. And, and instead of going to all our meaning because of, of uh, I'm running out of time, that I want to uh, highlight here that during the epidemic, uh, the face mask use became a new social norm and, and, and face mask is, uh, um, uh, face mask reflected uh, the civic responsibility of uh, other people. Um, and from this, uh, 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 from this qualitative study um, um, that, that they performed uh, with, uh, 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 with people, Asian people in Hong Kong, um, during and after after SARS outbreak, one male just reported just just in in accordance to uh, in accordance with our study with our results before if I wear a face mask I will lose face in front of my friends and they will laugh at me for being so weak. So it a little bit uh, uh, highlights what is the meaning of our previous findings that. Uh, performing protective behaviors, performing preventive behaviors may be regarded a sign of weakness. Um, and males, men had to be strong, so no viruses can uh, uh, can be be strong enough than, than than a man. So we need to show men need to show the the strengths. That's what we see here in this in these quotations, and that might be that's uh, my suspect that 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 might explain the the gender difference in preventive behaviors and healthcare behavior. And the question is, what will be uh, what will be the future of the face mask? I think face mask will stay with us, and we are going to face with the new uh, new uh, uh, flu epidemics, and and face masks sh sh uh, could uh, could promote uh, um, could 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 promote the the responsibility, the solidarity. Um, but that's uh, that's uh, we are a little bit in Western uh, countries. We're a little bit late uh, in this in this term. That, but I think the similar process uh, should be expected. On the other hand, when you use face masks, that might uh, uh, might uh, communicate uh, risk. So therefore, it's kind of amb ambivalent uh, attitude to the face mask because. Uh, because on some hand, uh, the face mask may promote that I'm I, that the VRS is infected. On the other hand, the face mask can also remind other people to to protect themselves. Um, okay, and we have a, a short topics, but I think uh, we we don't have time for that. So I jump over to. To the conclusion is that uh, we need to adapt ourselves and we need to prepare for other viruses, new, cor no, new coronaviruses, flu is going to happen next years or next years, and all other bacteria. So, and in this case, the prevention is better than cure. Health psychologists can have, can have an important role in in promoting preventive behaviors. We have the role to understand the risk groups, the, who are those people who, who do not follow the recommendation, why they don't follow, how we can, uh, we can uh, 
enhance uh, the preventive behavior. And, and I'm, a, I'm a fan of the biological development and biological research, but still behavior still uh, is, uh, remains the, uh, the cornerstone in prevention of the current and future epidemics. Okay, I think we are out of time, uh, and sorry for not letting, uh, no, not. Uh, I'm sorry for missing uh, the the last part, which would be another interesting lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Urban, for uh, this very interesting lecture, and. I would like to call the attention of the participants that this is the time for the questions. So uh, questions can be raised in the, um, in the section. Uh, here we have the first one. Uh, what could be the reason that men are more non adherent Um, yes, there are several reasons. One reason I or already mentioned in, in the presentation is that, uh, that the manhood and the being uh, strong is, is not a, is, 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 it doesn't include the being protective. So if I'm strong, I don't need the protection. I don't need the prevention. Okay. That's one reason. Uh, the other reason that usually men are are more risk taking, so they are more likely to take uh, take uh, take risk. Um, and and usually, what we see in the research that men underestimate. The risk of of of, of COVID nineteen. I underestimate the, uh, the the severity of of COVID nineteen. And uh, usually, I, one thing that I I can also just uh, speculate. It is just a speculation. Uh, I can also speculate that uh, uh, that healthcare behavior um, or or uh, or. Self, not, not health, self care behavior is different in men and women. So, and then the women's body requires, uh, requires self care all the time. Okay. The men's body are, are, are less so. Okay. So, and that might be that uh, the preventive, uh, uh, the, uh, the preventive uh, behavior, uh, which against uh, the coronavirus transmission, include uh, Include self care behavior. That might be. These are just speculation. A further research is necessary to to do. We need to do. We need to perform qualitative studies more to understand this. And there is also another ask a question: How long do you think mask will be used? I think mask face mask will stay with us. Forever, <laughs> I'm just uh, but the, the, dif the, the different intensity. Okay, mm. so I think that we learned, and I hope we learned that face mask could er er eradicate uh, the flu virus at least. Okay, so that means something. This is a this, this is a courtesy or or <coughs> or care of other people to wear face mask when we are sick. And when we have an epidemic, so I think that's something that we start to learn. And if you don't think about the when we have that hot weather outside, that is very inconvenient to to wear face mask. But on the other hand, when in the colder weather, when the flu and other upper respiratory infection uh, takes place, take place, uh, that the that the face mask is is more convenient to use. But anyway. We need to use that because, especially in in coronavirus, that one part of the my le uh, my lecture is a, a, I had to left it out because of the time pressure. I wanted to show that all those uh, 
biological mechanism which uh, which uh, tells us that we need to rest, that we need to stay home, that we are sick, is 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 working less in case of coronavirus. So therefore, the mechanism to detect that we are sick and the mechanism to detect, to detect that other people are sick, that's what we call sickness behavior, <clears throat> that is not working or less, not working as well as in uh, as as with other other infections. That's another interesting interesting thing in uh, in, uh, in this novel coronavirus. So therefore, the uh, the the face mask is is one thing that uh, that easy to implement and can protect even we are aware, even if we are aware. Uh, of infection or or we are not aware of, of of being sick thank you very much and there uh, is a third uh, question that asks how are full partial limited and no adherence measured by observational method or self-report method also how are those people adhered who refuse to take the COVID-19 vaccine do you have any data for that uh, this was a self-report so that's a weakness that's a clear weakness that we, it was a self-report it is this is uh, um, somehow maybe over uh, um, maybe uh, distorted by uh, by social social des uh, desirability effect um, Yes, so this self report data, but uh, the vast majority of research is uh, in, in uh, what, uh, the publications uh, use uh, self report measure because that that is the uh, the easiest way to do that. And and since we measure different types of behavior, social distancing, uh, face mask use, uh, hand sanitizers. It is almost impossible to measure all of them with uh, with observational method, which would be more optimal and less less biased by by social desirability. Also, we don't know anything about vaccine. When 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 we perform this uh, this research, this data collection, there was no vaccine even. Not in the not in the future. Um, we also this is a past this is longitudinal study, so we can uh, we can continue and analyzing our study. And in the for, in the third wave, we also ask about vaccines, so we can we can check it. But nowadays, now this research um, is would be important for the future epidemics, not, not this current epi epidemic. So we can learn how people respond this this type of epidemics and we, we may foretell or we may um, predict how people uh, will act in, in a possible uh, future epidemic. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a fourth question. Uh, that is asking how can the profession of a person interact with uh, with the COVID inf COVID infection? Home office based work is not accessible at, in all professions, so there must be a connection, right? Mm -hmm. I think that uh, there is a guideline. How if someone is in, if I understand the question well. Um, someone uh, who is infected with coronavirus, um, there is a clear guideline to stay home, and and I think the society should help in this in in in, in staying home. So, as in, as in many countries, there are um, there are many supports available. Those who are infected, that they should stay home. That is the uh, uh, the bad thing to do. All other preventive methods can decrease the uh, the rate of transmission, but we cannot we cannot say that uh, that the preventive behavior stops stop uh, or one or one or many preventive behaviors together stop the uh, to stop the, uh, the transmission of 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 infection. Thank you very much. And I don't see more questions from uh, from 
those uh, attending the meeting or the sorry the uh, the presentation. I would have one question. I come from the field of uh, of Japanese studies, and uh, you you had a, a sentence. Um, uh, I, I, I can I cannot quote, but 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 you but you stress that in Europe and and. Uh, and uh, European countries, face masks were not really used. Yes. Too often. Yes. In Japan yes. and also in, in the Asia Pacific region, in, in, in many countries, face masks, masks are quite usually uh, used. And basically, uh, they are used not, uh, not for the sake of uh, the person wearing it, but in case the person wearing it is infected or, or might be infected with with whatever uh, disease and wouldn't like to infect uh, other people at least in in some uh, countries so my question would be whether there are comparative studies on on the one hand uh between the differences uh, of of cultures or, or, or countries uh, where face masks are are more uh, common on the one hand and on the other hand and that would also be a, a very interesting uh, topic, whether in those countries where face masks were nothing special, uh, there were other uh, tools used against the virus, not basically due to health reasons, but uh, but because people need um, some new uh, solutions in, 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 in a new situation. But this is really just my um uh, conspiracy theory so of, of course uh, it, it is absolutely not uh, based on any scientific conviction that that it, it is a need but but i could imagine that where it is already in use people might try other solutions in in a new situation mm -hmm. the other solution is staying at home so not not uh, not leaving your home so um I don't see. I haven't seen. I haven't. I haven't seen a study which compare directly the Eastern Eastern Asian practice and and Western European practice. So I think that uh, uh, there's a simple uh, different uh, uh, time frame of using face mask. In Asian countries and Eastern Asian countries, the air pollution, beside the air pollution, or the tendency to to protect the, the face against against the sun because the brown uh, brown skin is regarded uh, less uh, uh, beneficial, and then they want to keep the, the the white skin of the of the face because that's that is the the Asian beauty um, or or the SARS experience, these are all promoted face masks. So, and when I was in Vietnam, I was surprised and I didn't, at that time of, of my life, I didn't really understand why they sell face masks on the street. Okay, so I don't really get that. So that I, I, I'm aware of that. But nowadays, uh, that is the, 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 the easiest protection. So I, I cannot see any easier way to protect others okay that's very important the face mask is not protecting ourselves and that that was a debate about the usefulness of 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 medical face mask that medical face mask is protecting others and that is uh, relevant in 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 asian culture because they don't want to embarrass the other people they'd want to put other people in in, in risk so i want to protect you so that's different because when we we see the uh, discourse about face mask in 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 in, in uh, among Hungarian people or or in, in Western countries, they uh, in, in Western people they see that the face mask is protecting me. Actually, that's not true. So so the uh, when I use face mask, I I protect other people, and that is what I call solidarity. In the, in, in, in the society. So therefore, the individualistic countries, when a, when a person emphasizing the protection of, 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 of himself or herself, is very different than how, how the Asian thinking works. They, they want to protect other people. Is that an answer? I, I, I don't know whether, how you can replace face mask. 
I no, I really, I, I, I really just, uh, I was just, I was just curious. For example, in 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 Western countries, these uh, uh, special uh, kind of of, of gloves uh, were uh, were used on 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 people's hands while doing the shopping. But after a while, it was it was told several occasions that it is not the best solution because it because it creates false um uh, uh, uh conviction of, of safety which is just not there so and i and i don't know for example whether in asian countries this was in practice or not but uh, but basically the reaction to the virus was was not Significantly different as 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 far as I I heard due due to the face mask uh, habits of the countries, but of course the the usage of face masks were was uh, already in practice, so of course it was much uh, quicker to uh, to spread it. So thank you very much again, uh, Professor. Uh, I don't see more uh, questions, uh, so I would like to thank uh, also you, Professor, and. Uh, everyone uh, joining our third uh, lecture of the What's New in Science series, the third event of the ELTA Alumni Academy. Be sure to uh, join us next time. Uh, that uh, event is going to be arranged uh, due to our current plans in uh, September, but we are going to update uh, the website and, uh, and give detailed uh, information. And if you are an alumnus of ELTA, please don't forget to join the university's alumni community at alumni.elta.hu, where you can read interesting articles, stay informed about events, find job opportunities, join groups and make connections with the alumni of the university. And remember that your ELTA, uh, ELTA alma, alma mater welcomes you back. So thank you very much again for being with us today. Uh, we wish you, I think after this uh, lecture, uh, we wish you good health and safety and uh, um, as much as possible COVID-free uh, summer vacation. Thank you very much. Thank you.